so I'm going to sit on this side in case some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Uh, it's been a good day so far. We want to still honor our brother and sister Brim, but we're also going to take some time to uh, honor brother and sister Gallagher and sister Belt and uh, brother Damon and sister Allison. Uh, we're very blessed to have former pastors, Pastor Floyd, uh, in our congregation. Of course, we're blessed to only have five pastors in this hundred years. Uh, it's just phenomenal. Uh, at this time, I've asked some of the ladies uh, to present some flowers to Sister Bell, the Gallagher's, and Sister Allison. So, go ahead and do that. And while they're giving flowers, uh, I'm going to have Brother Jamie come up and say a little bit of something. I surprised him, I guess, but that's okay. <laughs> Because when you get those heavy bolts on you, you know, you need that extra. 
extra help. I needed help this past week, and I needed special care. And that's, they're, they're specialists. They specialize. And, you know, they all, everyone talks about, you know, getting the best, getting the best doctor, or getting the best specialist. And if, if you're searching uh, church-wide, that's what someone said to me, uh, don't you want to move or live, you know, in this area? And I said, no. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm staying right where my pastors are at. I'm staying at Bethel Chapel, and I had no intention of uh, of leaving. And I said I feel like we have the best. Yeah. Uh, if you don't feel that way, uh, maybe a few more prayers might help you to realize that you have you definitely do have you have the best. Honestly, it's hard. You know, specialists are not cheap. Uh, I know all about that. It, it's it, there's a there's a, a major bill that uh, goes when I go to a specialist that I can go to. I pay a special price, and it, it's not always exactly the price you want to pay. But you know what? They have given their whole life to our congregation. And uh, it's not been that long that I come to the prayer meeting and I told Sister Ruth that I prayer request that was wearing down on me. And I told her, I said, it's only a miracle this can change. And you know, God, God answered that prayer, but there's, yes. there's a feeling that you get. And if you depend on your pastor, as your specialist, you're going to see some answered prayers. Right. And uh, that's that's what I just want to thank the Lord for our pastors and the fact that they do care and they do go the extra mile. And, you know, I've been around a lot of people. And I, I see the people who get that special care. And I see people that go to churches that I think, wow. I'm kind of shocked that they don't get that kind of care. And so I just want to remind you right. that, that you uh, you have uh, the best. And uh, you might not ever know it. You know, they say it, they tell you you don't have it. So we don't ever uh, want, to, I want to go through that. We want to make sure that we hang on to the best. And uh, that's because God gave them to us. And so I'm thankful for God's gift. Too. 
Plus, they've got the churches probably. So just kind of keep that in mind. I've got this prayer I'm going to read. Pastor, with your appreciation for your ministry, while we pray for you, guidance for the paths your feet will daily follow, wisdom for the counsel you are asked to give, compassion for those you are called upon to help, strength to stand for what is true and right, even when there is opposition, courage to press on even when things seem routine, perseverance to follow the desires God has placed in your heart even when you doubt. And then this is what us as a church should do. Support for your leadership, appreciation for their calling and gifts, and thanks for their personal sacrifice in their life in Christ. Sometimes the, the burden of that, the strength of that uh, is, is heavy. 
but I want you to know she takes it very serious. And, and uh, so I want to say how much I appreciate her love and support. When we got married, we went to Ohio. We was there for 17 years. And uh, she did get to be close to her parents for 17 years, you know, as we was traveling for holidays and traveling for this and all of that. And then my uh, brother, Sister Gallagher, came and passed in northern Kentucky. They was about an hour and a half away from us, the closest we've been all those years. And so, <laughs> and so about a year after they moved, I, that's when I decided to move. I, I wasn't running from them or anything, but it just worked out that way. And so but that, that's when we moved and uh, came here. Once again, she was, they were in northern Kentucky pastorate, so we just switched sides here. You know, we came to Illinois and they went to uh, they went to northern Kentucky over there by Ohio and was there. So then for I don't know how probably nine more years before they uh, moved here and uh, it's it's great to finally after uh, twenty something years of ministry to have our family with us. And it's uh, it's been a joy for me to be Pastor my dad and uh, you know my mom, and they. I just, I just appreciate my dad so much. I really do. I love him, and I appreciate his support for all he does as well. Amen. And uh, I'll just take my time tonight. Brother Jane and Sister Alice, and they've been just such a blessing to uh, to the church. And uh, tell you what, you won't find a more devoted young man than Brother Jane, and uh, just somebody that loves the Lord and is devoted, and he. I trust him completely, and uh, you know, there's a lot of time, a lot of men that can't can't trust, don't trust, or whatever for whatever reason. But man, I, I have the utmost confidence in Brother Jamie, and uh, I appreciate I appreciate Brother Jamie and Sister Alice, and uh, Sister Allison just made a wonderful uh, wife for Brother Jamie, hasn't she? And uh, she's just excellent, and we appreciate her excellent spirit that she has. And her love for the Lord. And uh, I want to say how much I appreciate Brother Gabe and Sister Frank as well. Our youth pastors. They're just, they're just great. They have a heart for their young people. And uh, tell you what, sometimes they have a very difficult job as well. Young people are young people. And uh, But I appreciate them and their faithfulness and stick to it and do the work of the Lord and, and the work that they have for all of that. And on that note, Okay, I just want to let all, the, all of our lay ministers know how much I appreciate you. All of our lay ministers. We're about the chapel is full of lay ministers. And uh, you you all always have my back. And you're a help for us when you're filling in, pinch any, wherever we need you. And uh, the Lord bless you for that. Thank you so much. And I uh, appreciate the lay ministry of Bethel Chapel. Amen. Amen. Can we go to church tonight? Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. 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 All right. Let's let's just let's just go to church. Praise God. I see the Lord come by and help us tonight. Amen. Brother Nathan, come get ready to lead and some songs if you would. Amen. And let's just let's just enter in and let's worship God. All right. And let's let the Lord have His way. Amen. I'll tell you what. We're living in a mixed up world. We're living in a mixed up hour. And there's a lot of things there. A lot of pressures that are on people today. Whether it's uh, pressures in your job, pressures in your home, your family, pressure that you feel in your, maybe it's physically or whatever, but there's a lot of pressure that people feel. And when we come to the house of God, it's a good time for us to have an experience with the Lord and let God, and then just kind of lift that burden and give us a little bit of relief and a little bit of uh, a touch of the Holy Spirit here for just a little bit. All right? Amen. Let's go let's ahead and worship the Lord tonight. All right? I'll just go ahead and say it since I'm up here, I appreciate all of our leaders in the church. Yeah. All being good, good men and women of God. I appreciate every one of them. And just letting you know, you know, I say, well, it's their job. You don't like to deal with all that trouble. If they didn't want it, they shouldn't do it. Uh, well, just so you know, they, I just let you know, it's, you know, like Brother James, Sister Allison, and them, they don't get paid enough to deal with some of the trouble you throw their way. I promise, all right? So we <laughs> can take it easy on them. And, uh, you know, you can get babysitters occasionally, yeah, pay for, to not have your kids burn down the house while you're trying to go out somewhere, well, uh, you have great youth ministers that don't get paid to keep your kids out of the fire, if you get what I'm saying, so how it wouldn't hurt to bless them a little bit, too, amen, so just letting you know, just letting you know, 
You bless them. I mean with money, not prayers too. That's good, but with money, that, that's always helpful. Amen. Why don't you get your Bible in your song book, number your red book, and turn to 329. Standing on the promises. Financial promises too for youth leaders and, and youth men and right now, assistant ministers. Amen. 329, red song book. Let's all stand. Let's get the word.
break it all. Amen. That's what I like. You know, I'm glad to have a God that I feel like there's a God. I know there's a guarantee that I can run to Him. He will take care of me. He's faithful. He's able. He's capable. Amen. No matter where you're at, you have a God that is able today. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, I would not be denied. Page 382. Amen. Nobody can keep you from their promises. Amen. Amen. 382.
God. Amen. You can be seated if you like. Amen. I like the, the point there about Jacob. Amen. Took a hold. Amen. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hallelujah. Amen. That determination to get a hold of God. And I am realizing how much you need the Lord. And you need God to help you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming out tonight and being in God's house. Amen. I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. It's good to see you. And Brother Schultz with us tonight. Appreciate you, brother. God bless you and your, your family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we're doing the peanut brittle right now, so if you would remember, uh, the peanut brittle crew will be working on Monday night and Tuesday night, uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, if you can help out at all with that, that is greatly appreciated. And it seems to be going really well uh, this year. So but we would we'd like to do three nights this week because next week we get into revival and so forth. And, and uh, so uh, we're going to be needing to put to put it to it, all right? From what I understand, it's, we've got a number of businesses that sell it for us now, and that really is great. Maybe you're familiar, you know of a business, or you think of, uh, of a business that's maybe where you we can put something to sell, uh, get permission, talk to my dad, and get, get candy, and set it up, all right? And uh, that makes it, makes it a lot easier than just uh, standing outside of Dollar General and uh, trying to sell it. But if you can do that, maybe so maybe around where you're at, there's a business you think might work out, uh, ask. I know uh, uh, Brother Jerry found a couple places that he just asked at, and they said, yeah, bring it on. And so uh, that's great. That helps a lot for us to be able to sell that candy. And uh, that money goes to help the camp. And it is a tremendous blessing to the camp, right. and uh, camp can de desperately use uh, the finances all through the winter time. So uh, if you can, if you would like to sell some candy, take it, sell it to some uh, your co-workers, sell it to your family, sell it if you'd like to just stand outside Dollar General and sell it, uh, whatever you'd like to do. But uh, thus people will get rid of that candy. Also, we always need sugar to be donated for that, so if you can't help us out. Sugar and those types of things. All right. Amen. Amen. And uh, of course, Wednesday night service. Let's be out in service on Wednesday night, and then uh, let's be looking and praying about revival coming up. And uh, starting uh, a week from Wednesday, we'll be starting our revival services. And uh, Thursday night, Brother Dennis Heath will be preaching for us. And Friday night, Brother Tim Brim. Saturday will be Dwayne Gallagher, and on Sunday will be Dwayne Gallagher. So. Keep those things in mind, if you would, as we uh, get close. And uh, amen. We're going to be doing some things here at the church, some just some tidying up, some uh, finished things from even our previous remodel. We've got a few little things that we need to get tied tied up, on loose ends tied up on that. So, men, if you could help out any of this week, would you let me know when you'll be available? We can uh, let you know what needs to be done, and you can help us out with that. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's receive the offering tonight. <coughs> Be a blessing in your giving tonight. Let's give to the Lord. All right.
Praise God. Good to have Brother Gabe and Sister April home. Amen. They was out preaching this last weekend and, and uh, missed them. I want Brother Gabe to stand testify to us how it went. Something good for the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, I was thinking about reflecting over the revival and everything. And, uh, you know, it sure was revival in the church. So thank you for that. Uh, seriously, it was a, a wonderful blessing. But uh, the, the last night I was speaking on, um, on the ministry. And, um, and I, was, I was preaching. And, you know, I, I made the, the, the point was is that your burden plus your vision equals your ministry. Right. And, uh, you know, I look at the light, I look at the light of brother and sister David. You know, their burden is something that, you know, we all should be looking towards. Um, I'm so thankful for the burdens of the lost. You know, it's not an artificial burden, but it's, it's genuine. I'm so thankful for that. But also I'm thankful for the, the vision that they have for Double Chapel and for the school and for each and every one of the youth here and uh, the church and just get together. I'm so thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that. But also, I'm so thankful for their passion. And, uh, you know, when they were preaching, uh, you know, a while back, we preached on cash a lot. But, you know, it's more than a shame for their sister Dave, and I really appreciate that. But they have a passion for the ministry Amen. here at Bethlehem Chapel. I mean, and that really drives us. I was thinking, you know, each and every, the lay, lay ministers, ones that, uh, you know, at different offices and ministry here. You know, whatever your ministry, look to, look to your sister David, you know, for, for an example, for a wonderful example. I'm so thankful. And our pastors. So thank you for our pastors. And uh, you know, I, I was also said here just real quick, you know, it was actually well, uh, seven years and three months ago that I was I started attending Bethel Chapel here. And uh, almost half the time that you guys have been here, that's what a wonderful opportunity uh, it has been to just to be under your guys' ministry. I appreciate uh, that. And then also just from
goodness to myself and Sister Ruth and their kindness to us and uh, their workability and uh, just working right alongside us and helping us all, every step of the way. We've got some great men uh, on the church board. We appreciate each of them and uh, all that they do for us. Amen. It's time just to be honored, all right, and honor the goodness of the Lord, why God's able to do it. Amen. Brother Blue, would you come? Amen. Sister Madonna, whatever you have on your heart tonight, appreciate them uh, being able to help us out today. And you couldn't pick a better person than Brother Blue to do past appreciation. And, uh, he's he's a, just one of the best. Well, how about everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful day this has been today. We have certainly enjoyed it and glad we were able to be home and be a part of it. Not just to speak, but just to be here in honor of our pastors and and uh, to enjoy that good meal today. Wasn't that a good meal? And uh, let's give all of you. Everything was so good. I don't know who made what. Well, I do know. Lee, you made the chicken, right? Yeah. Yeah. I saw, saw that on the side of the box there. Um, and uh, uh, it was a wonderful meal and decorated so pretty out there. And uh, just a great, uh, great day. I saw the cards piled up and and uh, the signs that you've made and everything. and. I, I just want to say that uh, y'all have done a really good job honoring the pastors today, and God bless you for it. Um, I uh, want to say, uh, first of all, LaDonna's not able to sing tonight. She's been battling a real bad cough, and so if you'll excuse her, um, we, uh, we'll just get right into the message here in just a minute. I have high expectations for this service. I mean, after preaching this morning, I've had immediate results. Look at chairs on the platform. I predicted that this morning, didn't I? And I didn't know that they were going to do this. I don't know how long they're going to be up here, but for the moment, for the moment, it looks like my prediction came true. And I did a little arithmetic while Brother David was saying how old he was when he arrived, and they've been here 15 years. Brother, you're going to need the chair. Yeah. But for you that weren't here this morning, I was just drawing attention to the fact that Brother David never sits during the service unless he's, he's not preaching. But, but uh, even while he was up here, as soon as you all gave him the uh, opportunity, Brother, uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Brother Larry, as soon as I'm kind of thinking, as soon as Brother Larry gave him the opportunity, he was out of that chair and standing up back there and ready to have church. So. Uh, um, we, uh, we, we don't know that the chairs will last much longer, but I was referring to their energy and his energy. So uh, let's uh, open our uh, Bibles tonight, if you will, to uh, the New Testament. New Testament, Gospel of Mark, chapter number 6. And uh, once again, we say thank you for the invitation to uh, speak both services today give Brother Brim a little bit of a break, even if it has made him nervous a little bit and uncomfortable. Um, give him a little bit of a break. I, uh, I don't necessarily uh, feel that this message will be directed right at Pastor Appreciation Day, but I feel like it's something the Lord's laid on my heart and will be appropriate for the day. I hope that it will uh, uh, help us uh, tonight. So uh, I'll tell you what my strange title is in just a minute. Um, I'll tell you it's not going to be anything about hairball. It's not going to be uh, that. But, uh, but I'll tell you that in just a moment. If you would, let's stand together for the reading of the scripture. Mark chapter 6, familiar story, starting in verse number 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples. And of course, he there is Jesus. Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before unto Bethsaida. And he sent away the people. 
And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he spake with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were all they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. A little side note there at the end. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us tonight. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence uh, all through this day, God. God, you have brought us together for this special occasion. And now tonight, Lord, as we come to the preaching part of this service, we ask you to uh, anoint us and help us and give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church. And we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Is Brother Ainsley here? Ainsley. Brother Chris. And is Ainsley around? I don't see him. I saw Chris earlier. Would... Uh, uh, Travis, is it Travis? Would you mind running right out of this door and leaning up against the wall just outside the door is something I want you to bring in for me if you don't mind, okay? All right. So, um, I, uh, I normally title my messages. I do that so that if it dies, you can identify the course. <laughs> this morning, I don't think I identified identify the message. You didn't give it a title anyways. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, but I, I would have titled it the, uh, the Servant's Anointing. Tonight I, uh, I can't really think of a, of a title so I just want to preach to you about 12 men in a boat. Alright? 12 men in a boat. So to get prepared for it, I've got this uh, instrument up here this oar, this paddle, whatever you uh, prefer to call it. So we'll keep that handy. They said the Mississippi River's been rising this week, so we'll be prepared just in case. This is a familiar story, um, and we've heard it preached on many times before. I've preached it from various aspects of this story. It's recorded for us here by Mark. We know that John references this story, Matthew also. And uh, each of them add little degrees of information that are important to us. But uh, I love this story. I think that it's, uh, um, first and foremost, it's miraculous. It's miraculous. It shows us so much about the power of Jesus. And we'll get to that in just a, a few moments as he shows us his wonder-working power. Um, but uh, we also learn something here uh, about Jesus. Um, it, it is miraculous, but not just calming the troubled sea and walking on the water, but uh, his, uh, his, his foreknowledge, his, uh, his, his ability to see things uh, that look like it would be impossible to see, his knowledge, uh, and, and that's impressive to me. So we'll keep these things in mind as we move along here and I try to preach to you about 12 men in the boat. I'll just give you a sneak preview. What I hope to try to uh, preach tonight uh, will have something to do with, with unity and harmony and cooperation and working together to accomplish a goal. 12 men in a boat. And, uh, and a little disclaimer here, even though I will be emphasizing men, it includes the women as well, all right? We're all in this uh, together, and I, I, I hope to uh, uh, make that, that clear as, as we get, get along. But uh, here's the story. Jesus um, had, just, uh, had just fed 5,000 people. It's a huge crowd had come to hear him teach and preach, and at the end of the day, they didn't have anything to eat, and Jesus worked a miracle of multiplying this little boy's lunch, 
And uh, afterwards, the disciples picked up the leftovers, 12 baskets full of leftovers. It was amazing. And, but it's, uh, it's getting on towards the end of the day. It's evening. And, uh, and so, um, uh, some things happen here. Uh, Jesus wants to send the people away, send them on home. He intends to go to the mountain to pray. He wants to be alone. He wants to get above the giant hairball. All right? And uh, again, you had to have been here this morning to understand that comment. Even, even if you were here, you might not understand uh, what I was trying to get at. But, uh, uh, but, then, but then Jesus tells His disciples, He says, uh, He constrains them, get in the boat and go to the other side. That word constrained is a, is a powerful word. It's almost like He doesn't give them an option. He constrains them, He demands them, He commands. He tells them, I want you to get in the boat and go to the other side unto Bethsaida yeah. while I send away the people. And so, uh, these 12 disciples of Jesus, uh, um, they, it, it appears to me that they, they all obey and they all react and they all respond. I don't see anybody bailing out here um, that I can, uh, that I can uh, you know, shoot, shoot at tonight. Uh, I've got the impression that they all get in the boat and they all are heading on this mission to get to the other side and to go to Bethsaida. That doesn't mean that they didn't have, uh, have a choice in the matter because there's always a choice. Amen. I said there's always a choice. You have choices tonight. The, 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 the ability to choose is a powerful thing. And it's an amazing gift of God that He's given to us to be able to choose. He constrains us at times. He makes it clear to us that He wants us to obey Him. That there are consequences if we don't obey. But He's not going to make us get in the boat. And, and in my imagination, and I do have a wild imagination uh, sometimes, I think here that there is at least a possibility that somebody could have said, well, I'm sort of afraid of water, so if you don't mind, I think I'm just going to walk around to the other side. Yeah. Or maybe somebody said, uh, um, you know, if, uh, if you don't mind, I think I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather uh, borrow somebody's horse and I'll ride a horse around to the other side. Or, uh, or maybe some brave, energetic soul said, listen, it's not that far over there. I'm just going to swim it. I mean, I've heard of people swimming the English Channel. I'm just going to swim it. Uh, or maybe I'm just not going to go at all. You have those choices. You don't have to get in this boat if you don't want to get in the boat. Amen. But it appears to me that if you want to be obedient and if you want to be and if you want to uh, receive the blessings of the Lord and He's constraining you to get in the boat, then why don't you just get in the boat? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Now let me, uh, uh, let me tell you that I have some symbolism in my mind tonight that I, I can't necessarily prove. It may not be doctrinal uh, here, uh, but I would like to envision this boat as a, as a, a symbolic metaphor of the church. So it's all inclusive here, not just these 12 men I keep uh, referring to, but, uh, but these 12 men are on a mission to obey the Lord, get in this boat, and them and the boat are going to go to the other side. Amen. I, uh, I, I think that this is important because uh, we're living in a day where so much is said uh, encouraging uh, what I call a rugged individualism. And there's a place for that. There's a place for us. Uh, and there's a time that we need to sing Brother L.L. L. Collins' song. I'm going to pray if I have to pray alone. I'm going to, hey amen, I've got to, I'm going to go. If you don't go, I'm going anyway. Come on now. There's a time uh, that we have to make a personal commitment to do it even if nobody else does it. But I don't believe that, uh, uh, that, that we can prove that it's scriptural for everybody to be on their own, by themselves, making it their own way. I believe in the church. I believe that church is important. 
even when so many, for some reason or another, are trying to tell us it's not important to go to church. You can be just as good a Christian at home. You don't have to. You don't have to be a part of a, a, a body of people in order to be a Christian and to be be saved. Well, you'd be in direct disobedience to the Scripture, Amen. Because the Bible tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. But the so much the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching. Amen. Amen. If Jesus says get in the boat, why don't you just get in the boat? Amen. Hello. <laughs> Amen. And so these 12 men did. These 12 men, they all get in the same boat. Now, I, and I don't mean, you know, while I'm, I'm, I'm uh, letting you know that I'm not in favor of, of, a, of a radical individualism. Um, uh, I believe in unity. I believe in cooperation. I believe in, in fellowship. Hello? Amen. Somebody said the simple definition of the word fellowship is two or more men in the same ship. But can I tell you that two or men, two or three or more men in the same ship doesn't always equal fellowship? Amen. And, uh, and and yet I think that there is something symbolic here about uh, about these men uh, getting in it together. They are twelve men getting into the boat to a, to head in the, the same direction. Now the opposite extreme. I don't want to imply to you tonight that I'm preaching an ecumenical message either. I don't mean an all inclusive that everybody of all religions is all going in the same direction. Amen. But, but uh, I'm, I'm talking about our boat. I'm talking about our boat. If we need to widen it out so it doesn't make you feel too uncomfortable tonight, we'll talk about our fellowship. Uh, churches of like belief, Pentecostal people, Pentecostal holiness people, people who have a similar goal in mind, who who want to who want to have a revival, who want to have a move of the Holy Ghost, people who believe in separation from the world and and, and uh, are moving in a similar direction. Amen. If that's the way you believe, why don't you get in the boat then and come along with us? And we'll work together and head towards that common goal. Praise God. And so the 12 men, they get in, in, in the boat. And they're heading towards a common goal. They're heading towards Bethsaida together. Um, I, 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 I don't want you to get the impression that even though these 12 men have the same goal in mind and are in the same boat, that they're all the same men. They are not the same. By that I mean that they are not replicas of each other. They are still their individual self. They are all uh, very, uh, very different. There are a few of these that were fishermen when Jesus found them and called them. And they have that in common. But not all 12 of the disciples were fishermen. Hello? Amen. collector. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, Simon who was Simon the Zealot uh, which was involved in politics and though he was a radical trying to, trying to change the political time of his day uh, he wasn't a fisherman. Let's just say he was involved in politics. Okay? And we have this tax collector and I don't know how Judas got nominated to carry the purse of money but maybe he had some experience as an accountant, a banker, uh, you know, a bookkeeper. I don't know, but he, so he has some business experience. These men are all different. They're different in their background. They're different in their experiences. I believe that they are different in their ages. Amen. But these 12 very different men get in the same boat and they are heading in the same direction. Praise God. I hope tonight that we can agree that, uh, that uh, we are at least all trying to get in the same direction. Moving towards a common goal. We may all be different uh, men and women, young, old. Uh, we may be at various levels of our spiritual growth. Uh,
recently, uh, a couple of years ago, they had a drought over in the Middle East that lowered the level of the Sea of Galilee to the point that it uncovered the skeleton or the bones of an old fishing uh, boat. And they, they did their, their, their dating of the materials like they do and examined it. And they, uh, they are so convinced that it comes from the, the time of Christ that they have nicknamed it the Jesus boat. Now nobody is saying that that's the boat that Jesus rode in or Jesus used. They're just saying it comes from Jesus' era. I mean, his time. And they think it was a pretty common example of a boat at that time, a fishing boat. Approximately 20 to 30 feet long and about 7 feet wide. So it can easily fit in this open area of this platform up here. This, uh, this, uh, this boat. Probably it had a sail that they could use to propel them uh, with the breeze to get out a little bit farther. But when the wind didn't cooperate, it had, you know, an oar on board. Uh, or a, a two or three. Probably not twelve. Because normally twelve men don't go fishing together with nets in a boat this size. Uh, but uh, they're using it for transportation. So it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a small boat for 12 men to get into. But they are obedient and they are getting in and they are going towards this, this goal. Amen. Amen. 12 men in the same boat heading towards a common goal. But I want to tell you tonight that these 12 men in the same boat heading in the same direction... Amen. Are now 12 men in the same storm. 12 men in the same storm. Amen. It's the middle of the night now. Darkness has, has fallen. And uh, the Bible tells us here that it was the fourth hour of the night. Which uh, uh, by, uh, uh, by the way that they calculated time in those days. Uh, a watch was three hours, uh, and it started at sunset. So from approximately 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock was the first watch. 9 o'clock to midnight, the second watch. Uh, midnight to 3 o'clock, the third watch. Uh, and the fourth watch would be just before daybreak in the wee hours of the morning. These guys left at evening. They still haven't got across the, 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 the lake. Uh, and, uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, amen. They got in a storm in the middle of the night. In the darkness, the winds were contrary to them. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The winds were contrary to them. It was blowing in the wrong direction for the sail to do them any good. And, uh, and, and they might have tried to turn the sail in a way that it would capture the wind and propel them. But they were struggling. The Bible says they were toiling. Amen. Trying to get that boat on the other side. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. And they were, uh, so they're, they're toiling, trying to get it to the other side. But the storm has uh, uh, accumulated against them. The waves are crashing. Uh, the, the, uh, the Bible tells us in one place that the sea had, was rising up. Amen. Great swells, waves, winds against them. They weren't seeming to make much progress because they had opposition. There were things that were against them. There were forces that were holding them back. And yet they were still trying, amen, to get to the other side. Oh, let me tell you something tonight, church. We run into a storm also. Amen. There's not a, there's not a person in this building that hasn't faced a storm of some type or another. Let me tell you, for you, it may be a different storm that you, than you've ever faced. But you're not the only one that has faced this storm. All of our troubles and trials are common to man. We have all been in a storm similar to this. And it may be that we're all in it together at the same time. The forces of hell are against us. The forces of the world are against us. And then the world And we are being uh, we are being opposed in, in, in many different directions. 
system. But uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, we, we've got a choice even now. We can either keep rowing in obedience to our Lord and Savior and keep doing everything that we know how to do to try to get it to the other side. Or we can turn this thing in another direction. We can turn it around. You can abandon ship. That's not a good idea. Come on now. you got choices. But to abandon ship in the middle of a storm in the darkness of the night, I don't think that's a real good idea, sir. Why don't you just stay on board? Amen. And even though it may look hopeless and you're tempted to think, why don't we just turn it to this side or that? Or turn around and go back? We can't do that either. If getting to the other side represents success, then turning around and going back means failure. If going to the other side means obedience to Jesus, for that's the last thing we heard him say to do, then not to go to the other side and go to Bethsaida is disobedience. We fail, we disobey. Amen. If making an effort uh, gives us hope of survival and hope of revival, uh, then giving up means uh, a hopeless surrender. I don't think we should give up. I don't think we should turn around. I don't think we should abandon ship. I think we need to grab an oar, amen, and put it down deep in the water and do everything that we can. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it heartily with all your might as unto the Lord. All I know is the Lord gave us direction and He pointed us that way and He told us to get there. Amen. And in my simplicity tonight, I hope by the grace and help of God to make it to the other side. Oh, somebody lift a hand and praise the Lord tonight. Amen. Twelve men in the same storm. Suddenly, uh, this is not uh, as easy as it once was. Suddenly, uh, things are looking uh, hopelessly uh, against us. Uh, drastic things have happened. Uh, it's all right when it's smooth sailing. It's all right when everything's going our way. It's all right as long as we can sit here on this boat and have a picnic. And come on now and enjoy a, 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 a breezy evening and uh, everybody cooperating. But in the middle of the storm, that's where we find out what we're really made of. That's where we find out what we're really dedicated to. That's where we make up our mind whether we're in this with all of our heart and soul and strength or we're not in it. And then I'm going to tell you, friend, I believe that God has put us in a boat together He's given us a direction in which we should go. And I think that even though we're all in a storm of one shape or size of another, we need to keep on rolling and keep on pushing and keep on doing what we can. Amen. To bring the revival that we crave. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, preachers get in storms. Preachers get in storms. I had a, I had a sad flashback this morning. When I, after the service, after having an appreciation service for our pastor, and I've already said it, you did a beautiful job. It was so great. Uh, I, I had a flashback to uh, right after we had left the Junction Hill Church where Brother Dwayne of Gallagher is pastoring now. We'd been there 10 years and we, we loved it there so much. And, and, and uh, the Lord was moving us on. We didn't understand it. And so it was a hard decision to make. And we cried for weeks. We loved those people. And raised our children there 10 years of their life. And not long afterwards, uh, I was at a fellowship meeting and I saw a pastor I hadn't seen in a while. And he came up and he said, how you doing, Brother Mike? Uh, I said, well, to tell you the truth, brother, I'm going through one of the hardest times I've ever gone through. I said, I don't know anything harder than having to say goodbye to people that you love so deeply and so much. And then he got real quiet and he said, brother, there is something harder. It's when you have to say goodbye to a church. And, and, and nobody expresses their appreciation and nobody shakes your hand and nobody says they're going to miss you 
and, uh, and then I realized uh, I had just heard that that man had been through a great storm and the church had voted him out and sent him on down the road without no so much as a thank you for all of his years of, of labor there. That's a sad story. Yeah. Amen. That's a sad story. Even preachers get in storms. We're, we're, uh, we're trying. We're trying. We're not, we're, we're, we're not uh, superheroes. Amen. Uh, we're still men. God called and anointed like I tried to preach to you this morning, but we're still men. Brother David, can I have you come up here and help me for just a little bit? And, uh, uh, and, 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 and I, I appreciate this man so much. Uh, you listen, you can sit down there. You're at that age. Just sit down. They've got a special seat on this boat just for you. Um, where's that box you got a while ago? I never did see what was in it, but maybe you didn't want me to see what's in it. Well, we'll save that for later. Amen. Listen, listen, here's a man that he knows his calling. He knows what God has sent him to, to do. He, he has a sense of direction. Amen. But the storm comes. And maybe, maybe it's a hard, but I believe that Brother David and Sister Ruth, and I'm just, I've got the men in the boat here, okay? So, uh, but I believe that Brother David is determined, amen, to keep on a road. Yes. Pentecostal revival, a move of God, souls being saved, amen, stay focused, stay focused. I know it's not easy, I know there's forces against you, I know that there's not always the call. Sister Allison up here uh, because uh, we need some help. Amen. We need some help with the Christian school. We need some help with the field and while the pastor's gone and all the other duties. He can't roll all by himself all the time. Brother, would you mind just spill him for a little bit and just take that oar and help us row because we don't want to give up. We want this thing to keep moving in the right direction. Going forward. Praise God. i 
Uh, that have some energy about them. And some enthusiasm about them. You all with me tonight? Uh, they testify, they exhort, uh, they sing, they exhort.
you know what? Let me take it. And you're all saying, Michael, row your boat ashore. Right. 
It doesn't matter, amen, young people, if you're just getting started. You need Jesus. Brother Gallagher needs Jesus. I need Jesus. Brother Brim. Brother Brim needs Jesus. Brother Brim needs Jesus. We, there, there's a point where we, we just begin to realize we've done all we know to do. Given all we know to give. Gone as far as we're able to go. But praise God. Amen. In the middle of the night, He shows up. In the middle of the storm, He comes walking on the water. And then because He knows. He knows how much we desperately need Him. Listen. Board members, you need Jesus. Song leaders, you need Jesus. Musicians, you need Jesus. We can't do this in our own power, our own strength, our own ability, our own talent. Give it all you've got. But when you can't go on any farther, realize it's time to cry out to Jesus. Praise God that He came. And He got on board the boat. And He spoke to the winds. And the storm ceased. And one of the accounts says something almost a little mysterious to me. But it says, and immediately they were at the shore. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't want to read into it more than is there. But it almost seems to apply a time warp. Soon. Storm over. Destination reached. Jesus on board. that on one level it sounds like reaching the other side may be symbolic of heaven and, and it is but it's also symbolic I think of, of many other things revival right. Right. the side of the place that Jesus sent them to was the house of fish right. the fishing house right. and then it was a familiar place to at least four or five of the disciples who grew up in that area it's a place of fishing was Jesus implying go amen, to the fishing house. Go catch fish. Go remember what I told you. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. Soul winning. Winning the lost. Listen, uh, I, I, I may have forgot earlier the bus drivers and the bus workers, uh, but I, I could get all of them up here tonight. We have a mission. We're trying to reach people. We're trying to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. Keep it driving, keep it rowing, keep it pushing. For the help of God. Amen. I'd like to encourage you to exert a little energy right now and get up out of your pew and put a hand or two in the air and just tell Jesus, Here I am, Lord. Come on now. Praise God. Anybody here want to get in this boat? Anybody here? saved, if you're not a Christian and you're trying to get through the storms of your life friend, you need some help listen, I, I believe brother and sister Brian will do everything they can to help you you're young, you pastor do everything you can to help you we'll all work together to try to help you but ultimately you're going to have to have Jesus on board your boat why don't you why don't you cry out to him tonight? Why don't you cry out to him? I don't mean to have to get loud in your voice, but maybe symbolically you could stand, step out right now and come to this altar and say, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I've been trying it in my own strength. But I, I want you in my boat, Lord. I want you in my boat. Come on, if you need to be saved tonight. Praise God. Do we have somebody that can come to the piano here? Praise God. <laughs> I feel the Lord trying to help us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Church, I'm pleading with you tonight for unity. I'm basically 
play an outsider though I call this our home church. We're gone way more than we're even here. I don't get in on all of the inner workings and, and the things that are happening. I don't know anything really. But I feel compelled tonight on this Pastor Appreciation Day where we've made it clear how much we love the Brims and our other pastors that work here in the church. Amen. I feel compelled to tell us as a church we all have work to do. We all need to grab an arm work together. We're not against each other. We're for each other. We're on each other's side. Let's move in that direction. Praise God. Let me ask, since I didn't get him up here with the oar in hand, let me ask the bus workers if you would come and gather up here. Some of you a driver or a bus route um, organizer, captain. One or two, several of you come on up right now. I want you to stand here. I want you to stand right here.